Welcome to the third video in the Fortitutor.tech Python package walkthrough. In this video we'll be going through an entropy pooling example and talk about sequential entropy pooling heuristics which usually give much better results. As always we start at the front page of the repository and navigate to examples. And if you look at the second example it's called entropy pooling and um, this example is actually the accompanied code to an article called Sequential Entropy Pooling Heuristics. So basically it shows you how to replicate the results of table 4 and table 7 in that article. Okay, so the first thing we do is to import the packages that we need. In this case it's just numpy and the fortitude.tech python package. After that, we load the log normal PNL that we have used before and uh, use the simulation moments uh, function to see the prior statistics. In addition to that, we also uh, compute a correlation matrix to see how it looks in the prior simulation. After that, we go in and implement the views that are given in this article. And the thing about these views is it's an illustrative set of views that basically really shows the consequences of using entropy pooling in the original way where parameters are fixed to the prior values when necessary and using entropy pooling in the sequential way which we introduce in this article. So the views that we have implemented is that private equity should have expected return of 10%, emerging market equity should have a volatility of less than or equal to 20%, DM equity should have a skewness of minus uh, 0 0.75 and a kurtosis of more than 3.5 and, and then finally correlation between corporate high yield and emerging market debt uh, should be 50%. So this is what we implement in this code cell and it might look like a lot when you look at it and it actually also is. But let's go into the article and just talk a bit about the theory. So we go into the article and we can open it here in our browser. In this article, uh, one of the first sections uh, will just give you a recap of entropy pooling and yeah, tell you what is the challenge. So basically the entropy pooling problem is formulated as this convex function subject to linear constraints on the posterior probabilities. And here there is an important separation because it can be nonlinear functions of the market such as views on variances but they must be formulated in a way that is linear in the posterior probabilities. And this is actually one of the main limitations of the entropy pooling approach. But this is necessary to make it run in a fast and stable way. So the sequential heuristics, they try to give us better parameters that we use as fixed values than just uh, the prior, uh, because we show you that this is actually imposing some potentially strong implicit views. Okay, so here first there's just some talk about entropy pooling, why you solve it in this way. And then we get to the point where you can see how we implement views on means, for instance. So a view on the mean is quite simple. This is just taking uh, the column we have for some assets, transpose it into a row, and then multiplying by the posterior probabilities and specifying some value. So here we indicated that it can be an inequality in, yeah, any of the directions or an equality. The problem then comes when you want to implement a view on the variance. So here you can see that it already becomes non-linear in the posterior probabilities x. So we need to do something to this term here to make it linear in x uh, in order to be able to, to solve it with, with the entropy pooling approach. Um, so in the original article, the suggestion is just to fix it to the prior value. But the, the problem is with this is that if you have a view that changes, let's say, the expected value of private equity, then also it probably will affect uh, the mean of DM equities. Uh, so if you, if you use the mean of DM equities still, then you introduce an implicit view that uh, there will be um, 
some discrepancy compared to what entropy pooling will predict. And this is the source of these um, yeah, implicit views. So the sequential heuristics, all they do is try to come up with better fixed values uh, that we can use and then process the views sequentially at the end. Um, in the last run, the views will contain everything that you have specified. You can read much more about it here in this article. In the article, it's uh, given in a very you know high-level mathematical um, way. So here, I'm just going to show you what happens when we only have views on means, volatility, skewness, kurtosis, and correlations, as in this case. So basically, for the first heuristic that we recommend, you can imagine that you have your prior probability vector p. And then if you want to implement a view on the means, well, then it doesn't require you to fix any other parameters to be linear in the posterior probabilities. So you implement all your mean views and you compute some posterior, intermediate posterior probability vector. Then the next step, you, you update all the means values that you have. You use these to implement your volatility views. And, but the prior that you use is still the initial one that you have. And then finally you go to the skewness and kurtosis views and then at the event end you go to co correlation views. For the last step that you do, uh, all your views will be included uh, on these parameters uh, and then you have the final posterior probability vector that we call Q. So this is the first heuristic, this is the one that usually gives the best performance. But we also have another one, which usually is a bit faster uh, and gives quite similar results to, to the other one. Uh, so here, instead of using the prior probability in each iteration of entropy pooling, we use the intermediate posterior probabilities that we have here. Yes, so this is just a practical overview of the sequential uh, entropy pooling heuristics. All right. So now it's back to implementing all these views. And you can see that quite quickly, when you have to do these things by hand, uh, it, it does become quite complicated. And you have to have control over which rows are equalities and inequalities and things like that. But uh, this is really good practice. So I encourage you to try to replicate the results of the sequential heuristics because they are given in, in the article and you can see that if you can get the same results. Um, but okay, let's, let's just go through these things. Uh, here we have uh, prior mean values um, and we extract the rows that are relevant for the means that we have here. We do the same thing with volatilities. Uh, for skewness, it's only one row and kurtosis. Uh, that's the uh, DM equities and then for correlation uh, this is how you implement a view or have a row with correlations um, for this corporate high yield and emerging market debt. So basically with these rows now it's about determining which one belongs to to equality views or inequality views and this is what we do here. So the matrix A and the vector B, this is the equality views, so this is where we have that all the probabilities must sum to 1, and then uh, we have the inequality views at the end in the vectors G and H. So here, after we have specified them, we just use the entropy pooling function to compute the posterior probability vectors. We also compute some numbers uh, just the relative entropy. This is <laughs> this is the the number that we are trying to minimize to see what it is, uh, and a number called the effective number of uh, scenarios. There's a reference to how you compute these effective number of scenarios and what it means, and uh, so I'm gonna let you read it in the article. Uh, but one thing that we can assess uh, is that a lower relative entropy that's a better result uh, because. This, this is uh, the objective that, <laughs> that we are trying to, to minimize. So what you will see in the article is that the sequential entropy pooling heuristics, they achieve a lower entro relative entropy than the original suggestion. Uh, and um, yeah, so you can look into that and you can read about what the source is uh, of these things. Okay, so uh, here uh, when you look 
uh, at, at these tables you should uh, be able to recognize them from the article uh, that, uh, and you should also be able to see that <laughs> all the views that we have implemented um, are correct so basically we had this 10% for private equity and uh, 20% volatility for emerging market equity we had that the skewness and kurtosis uh, of DM equity there should be some changes there and then finally we have the correlation between uh, emerging market debt and corporate high yield to be at 50. So the point is that using this original entry pooling approach, uh, it seems that we have been able to implement the views uh, as, as we want. Uh, then finally there are some comments that of course if you want to work with entry pooling in a really really elegant way you should probably build an interface for handling these different views and also for instance handling view confidences and things like that um, but this is something which is very very complicated and that we don't provide uh, in the open source package all right with that that's the end uh, of the second example using entropy pooling and then uh, again as with, <laughs> with the other videos uh, if you enjoy this package if you enjoy these videos i encourage you to give uh, the github repository a start and then i'll see you in the next video <laughs>